Breezy went crazy. I didn't have Chris Brown delivering the hardest diss track of 2024 on my bingo card. Who knew that Quavo and Chris Brown had real beef? I thought it was all just funny games. Chris Brown is showing the world that his rapping skills are just as good as his singing and dancing. I would have never expected Chris Brown to go so savagely at Quavo. The dripping red line for those that don't know, Chris Brown is said to be affiliated with Fruit Town Pyru Bloods in LA. He moved out to LA from Virginia when he was starting his music career. Chris Brown calling Quavo the weakest link out of the Migos is savage when he was the lead man of the group and calls himself Honcho, or in other words, the boss. If you think about it, Offset and Takeoff especially were the better rappers overall. Quavo was the hook guy. The whole group just doesn't come together without Quavo. But I'm not mad at Chris Brown because he's calling things as he sees it and I really would have never known that their beef was this savage and that they had this much animosity towards each other because this kind of came out of left field. Never heard them diss each other previously, but hey, maybe there's some subliminals that people will discover on Twitter about where this beef actually transpired from. Chris isn't playing on this weakest link. He is directly hitting Quavo with everything that he has about him and about the women that he's dealt with. The best part about this diss is that Chris Brown's taking no prisoners and he's not even trying to like be witty, drop punchlines, any of that. He's straight out firing bars telling Quavo exactly how he feels about him and the things that he's done and exactly where he stands in music. This line right here had me tripping out. He said, they say that revenge is sweet. Don't let that line go over your head. They say revenge is sweet. Now think about that shit. Don't let that line go over your head. I might just sing about that shit. I had a feeling about that dick. There's something sweet about that shit. I got some tea about that dick, but I ain't gonna speak about that shit. So when he's saying sweet, everybody knows that Sweetie and Quavo were together. So he's already saying that he's getting revenge by being with Sweetie. And the worst part for Quavo is Chris Brown saying that he smashed Sweetie while she was with Quavo. That makes it even worse to find out that you've been with a woman and that now you not only had another dude hit the same woman that you hit, he did it while you guys were together. That's cold blooded, it's savage. Drake and Chris Brown, when it comes to the women, these dudes don't care. It's all fair game, especially if you're not their main homie. Drake, maybe if you're the homie, he may still hit, but Chris Brown seems like if you're not the homie, he don't care. It's all fair game to him. It's crazy to me that both of them hit the same chicks, Karuchi and Sweetie, and Chris Brown made it more wild by saying that he did it while Sweetie was still with Quavo. I'd be upset. The funny part about this situation is that Sweetie even responded on X and she said, woo child. But she never denies that Chris Brown's allegations were true or false, that he actually slept with her. You'd think that someone would want to clear their name if they did this while they were with their boyfriend at the time, which is Quavo. Breezy came direct on all his punchlines, no metaphors or lyrical gymnastics, just pure aggression and bars and dislike for Quavo. He didn't put in any trickery or nothing. It's just straight, here's what I gotta say about you and you're gonna feel it, period. These are some of the other bars that stood out to me that were aimed right at Quavo. Quavo talking like he a thug, he a bitch with dreads. Quavo talking like he a thug, nigga you a bitch with dreads. Like what? Having another man call you a bitch. That's one of the highest forms of disrespect for a man is having another man call him a bitch. It's, you know, it's different if a female said it or somebody else says something crazy, but a man to a man calling the other man a bitch, you're, you're directly asking for a response from this man. Quavo, like, really, they need to get in the boxing ring and go put the gloves on because this beef went from zero to 100 before anybody even knew what was going on. On niggas. I'm a defecator. I'll put Amigo on a ventilator. Breezy is saying he will beat Quavo so bad that he will be clean to life. There's no mistaking what Chris Brown is thinking. I have to hope that this beef is going to stay on record and all of the people around them will squash this beef if it starts to spill over into something else because we all like to rap, you know, back and forth in the battles, but the animosity that I'm hearing from Chris Brown on this record doesn't sound like it's just a regular beef that they're gonna, you know, hash out by spitting the lyrics. But hopefully, you know, QC and Breezy's team step into things and kinda, you know, put a kibosh on any outside influences getting into the mix and that they can just go at it bar for bar, you know, track for track, talking about whatever situation with the women. All of that's great. That's good for hip hop, we all enjoy it. I'm enjoying the competitive spirit of hip hop overall with all the different artists that are putting in the work that they're putting in. Plus we're getting a lot of music on a day to day basis. We don't know who's gonna drop next, who's gonna pop into the conversation, who really wants to beef about what and why, but this is getting fun and exciting, so I'm, I'm curious to see who is gonna throw the next punch. Is Quavo gonna respond before Kendrick responds to Drake? That we don't know. But it's seeming like it's more likely. 
This part right here really stood out to me as well. Stop talking about beating girls. You were beating women on an elevator. Stop talking about beating girls. You was beating bitches on an elevator. We seen the taste. That's devastating. You doing bad. That one is such a sticking point for people, fans of music, because a lot of people still have not fully forgiven Chris Brown for the public incident he had with Rihanna. And Quavo mentioned this in his diss to Chris. And now he's calling out Quavo for tossing Sweetie around in the elevator, which... A lot of us saw that as well, but I didn't see any punches thrown, but still, I'm an advocate for not putting your hands on a woman. You should never hit a woman, like do anything, you know, malicious to a woman, period. If it's that bad, walk away, you know, go somewhere else, do something different. Just stop dealing with that woman. This is, it's a touchy subject because Chris has been criticized, scrutinized, and almost, you know, put out the music industry because of his situation with Rihanna when they were in the car and he ended up blacking her eye and busting her nose. Even though, you know, it feels like she had a lot of influence on that and she might have been hitting him first, you still got to find a way to separate yourself from the, you know, the animosity and the subject and the things that are causing you to get riled up like that. Again, Quavo gets called a bitch and his music is said to be trash. You a bitch in your music trash. By Chris Brown. These are two things that have to be strong sticking points for Quavo. One, he's a man. Calling him out of his name as a female dog is crazy. And then also to go on the music that this man stands on in the business that he's been doing for years and say that his music is trash too. I mean... I, I don't know how much more a person can take verbally to not respond in a more physical manner, especially with someone like Chris Brown, who you know is going to keep coming at you whatever kind of way because Chris doesn't back down. You've noticed that. And he's an R&B singer. So the thing about him, he's not your traditional R&B singer that, you know, is super soft, lovey-dovey, all of that. He has those songs, but then Chris also is like, I'm gonna take your girl, I'm that man, I'm I'm better than you, I don't mind fighting, it is what it is, girls come and go, all of that type of stuff. So he don't feel like he has nothing to lose when it comes to music, and he was rapping when he was younger too. Chris Brown is one of the best artists when it comes to being an all-terrain. He does singing, dancing, rapping, he can act. This man has a lot of different talents, and sometimes he's been compared to MJ. Even though he's not at MJ's level, and he said that himself, he is the biggest act that has most of the talents that Michael Jackson has. In another line, Chris Brown said, Fashion Week sat me next to your lame ass. I was truly mad, and all I kept thinking about was breaking your face, but I gave you a pass. Fashion Week, they sat me next to your lame ass. I was truly mad. All I kept thinking about was breaking your face, but I gave you a pass. You really have to have deep-rooted issues with a person to be sitting next to them and all you could think about is fighting them and breaking their face. CB makes it clear that if he knew it wouldn't mess up his image or his money, him and Quavo would have fought that day at the event, but he chose to take the higher road and actually you know, pay attention to what could happen and transpire from the situation if he was to do something to Quavo at that fashion show. I'm really curious if all of this just boiled over from them dating the same females or is there more to the story? because it seems like 90% of the beefs that men get into when it comes to music or entertainment business ends up being behind women. And the craziness is it's not even women that they're married to. Why is it that we always end up fighting over them? The good part about the Kendrick and Drake beef, that's probably the only beef that I've noticed that does not have women involved in it in some way, shape, or form. Future and Drake has it. Now we see Chris Brown and Quavo has it. Uh, who else? 50 Cent and Ross. A lot of these beefs all have different women tied into them and the women get used in the situation to you know make the man more mad than he would be if the woman wasn't involved why can't they just beef over the things that are relevant to them especially if you're not married to this woman especially if the next man can get the woman if it's going to be you know interchanging hands of these different women i get it if it's your wife but for a regular woman that you don't even marry that you're not staying with long term 10 years 15 years 20 years why can't y'all just let it go but hey that's just me now this this part of the song was the craziest part to me. R.I.P. Takeoff, he the only real one got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody wished it was you instead. R.I.P. Takeoff, he the only real one that got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody really wished it was you instead. Oh, shit. You tripping, Chris? Like, bro. Like, bro. How do you tell this man that his peers and friends wish that he was the dead one instead of Takeoff? That is just, whoo. No other way to take that but direct. Chris Brown went 
full Voltron on this one. I don't even understand like what Quavo's response should be from here, but it's, it's gotta be either coming with some super heat seekers on the track, or they need to set up a celebrity boxing match like now. Not later, but like right now. I never expected this beef to be so big that it almost overshadows Drake and Kendrick, but this one is getting fiery fast and taking a turn. My hopes is that everyone keeps this in songs only, and more than likely, that's how it will play out. To talk about Takeoff's nephew, knowing how much pain he felt being there on scene when he passed is crazy breezy. Crazy. Thanks Splashers for watching. What do you all think about this beef and the other beefs that are popping up? So far this has been a crazy spring and we haven't even made it to summer yet. It's going to be a hot ass summer in the words of Cameron. Catch you guys on the next one.